At one point, there was a city in the lower parts of Anima, outside the outskirts of Mistral. You might have heard of it, or maybe not. Can't blame you, it's only resurfaced on the map about 22 years ago. Its existence was common knowledge about 100 years ago, but then it vanished. It was a small city, so many thought it fell to a grim attack or something. The real story is far more interesting. It was around that time that oppression against Faunus and Lovestead was at its peak. You've heard the story before, haven't you? Oppression leads to anger, anger leads to rioting. The thing is, riots are chaotic and easily disbanded. Faunus didn't really have a good leg to stand on. That is, until the Bianks decided to organize. These guys, a family of white wolf Faunus, descended from long-forgotten royalty, rallied the Faunus and overthrew the government. I'd tell you all the gory details of what they did to the remaining humans who surrendered. But that's not the interesting part. The point is, the Bianks took control of the entire government, and for the first time in Lovestead, the Faunus were calling the shots. Unfortunately for them, none of the Faunus in charge knew how to properly run the city. Faunus were treated like slave laborers before, and didn't know how to trade with other villages and towns. The humans all had access to advanced weaponry, but Faunus were restricted from using them, in fear of the revolution that in the end did occur. Their solution was to cut themselves off from the outside world by building a series of defensive barriers that kept Grimm out. And it worked, but at a severe price. None of them could leave the village, and no one on the outside came looking for them, since they didn't exactly produce anything the rest of the world didn't have. So, they faded away from history, sustaining themselves with their own food and livestock, and many years passed without any of them ever having seen a single Grimm. And that's where the interesting thing about the Bianc family comes in. These guys were descended from a bunch of old aristocrats and had this real prideful complex about purity of bloodline. Now, we all know where this is going. Yeah, inbreeding. It was in their family before, but the effects weren't apparent until far later. The Bianks ruled Lovestead for almost 80 years, and no one really protested early on because it was so empowering for the Faunus. Too bad they picked the wrong role models to put in power. See, incest has a nasty way of biting back at you. The second generation did see a bit of genetic defects. Some misshapen facial features, personality disorders, a couple of mismatched eye colors. But it was at the third generation where the effects really began showing. You know how Faunus only have one single animal trait? Well, pretty soon the hallmark of being a Bianc was having either two sets of ears, two tails, both ears and tail, or a penchant for mental instability. Sometimes they end up decent, but with a short lifespan. It was a roll of a 20-sided die, with only one good side. The Bianc who became the head of the city after 40 years in particular was way sick in her head, super paranoid. With good reason, too. Her people were starving, running out of food and lacking resources from the outside world, and they had started rebelling against her. She, in all her paranoia, declared what was effectively martial law and confiscated the weapons from the citizens. She acted like a dictator and a tyrant. Now, that was the last straw. It was time for another revolution, led by another Bianc. Six years prior, from the last generation of Bianks, was a child named Maruna. She escaped the city somehow, and they thought she had perished. In fact, she had returned with three of her friends, all of them professional huntresses freshly graduated from Beacon Academy in Vale. Her head was full of ideas, and her heart was set on bringing the freedom of the outside world to her hometown. They infiltrated Lovestead and joined the friendly neighborhood rebels set on liberating it from the Mad Queen, Maruna's aunt. She, her teammates, and the leader of the rebels, Oro Garrison, used the same guerrilla techniques from the First Revolution to overthrow the new Beyond regime. By the time the Mad Queen knew what was happening, they had already lost. Oro Garrison was elected as the new head of Lovestead, and was instructed this time on how to run the city the right way by Maruna and her companions. And thus ended the 80-year reign of incompetence and inherited sickness by the Bianks. Maruna did eventually stay there too, but decided not to take credit for the Second Revolution. And she had to endure endless scrutiny and suspicion ever after, and so did her children. There's a saying in Lovestead, 
When a white wolf faunus is put into power, what you get is either a tyrant or a messiah. Let's just hope that her children end up becoming the latter.